Let's run through an example of doing a paired t-test. This is a book problem from Bach, Bellman, and DeVoe. Uh, is there evidence of a significant calorie preserving difference between strawberry and vanilla yogurt? Um, so we have here 12 brands of yogurt, and we've got the calories per serving strawberry and vanilla. And uh, first of all, the question is what kind of uh, design to do, what kind of test to do? And uh, the key thing is that there's a natural pairing here. For each brand, we can look at the difference in the calories per serving and look at that and do a paired t-test. So there's a natural pairing, um, and we don't want to think of this as one sample and this is another sample. Um, for one thing, that's much less precise, and for another thing, they're not independent samples. I didn't go out and sample randomly 12 strawberries and independently do 12 vanillas. They're exactly the same brands. So the only really meaningful test, but a very good one to do, here is the paired T test. So how would we do that on the calculator? Um, enter the data into L1 and L2. I just entered them into these columns. Okay. So we're doing a paired T test. The first thing we do is just a tiny algebra. We take L1 minus L2 and we store that in L3. Okay. And it gives us that. Uh, information there. Okay, so that's going to show up in L3. We'll see that in a minute. But before we actually go ahead and do the, the test, let's check. Let's go ahead and check the assumptions. Okay, is it appropriate to do paired? Yes, it's a real meaningful pairing. They're definitely not independent, um, but it's a classic case where we want to do a paired t-test. Randomization, eh, that's kind of dubious. Uh, they didn't tell us anything about that. We're going to assume that these are representative. Maybe it was really true that we took all the brands and randomly picked off a list which ones we were going to buy. That's probably not what happened. Okay, so this is one source of concern. Maybe these were the ones that happened to be in our store cooler, um, and maybe they're not representative. 10% condition. This is one that we just we always talk about, and uh, very rarely do we have an issue with this. But this is a one where it actually might be violated. Um, we'd like to get a pretty decent sample size. So we can use the, the, the power of sampling to reduce variation. And so we've got this nice list of 12. But to be honest, it's not clear if there's actually 120 different brands of yogurt out there. Um, much less 120 brands of yogurt that anyone is ever going to see in a regular store. Okay, So this is actually a, a pretty significant issue here. We might have actually a very brands of yogurt. That's not such a bad thing. It just means that the mathematics that makes these tests simple um, is essentially is an independent assumption, and that might be violated. So let's just be, be aware of that. Nearly normal condition. Let's check the histogram. Remember, we check the histogram of the differences, L3. Once we do L minus one, L1 minus L2 equals L3 um, and store it in L3, for paired testing, we pretty much ignore L1 and L2 as independent data. It's all about L3. But, uh-oh, this guy, ooh, cool reverse video. Um, that's got an outlier. Let's go look up where the outlier is. Da, 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 da. Uh oh, wow. Great value uh, vanilla is really low in calories. It's almost like that could be a misprint or something. It's really low. It's way lower than the other guys. And their strawberry is on the high side, it looks like. Okay. So that's just bizarre. Um, and that's what's causing the outlier. So this is marginally okay for such a small sample size. It doesn't look like a big red flag, but with the outlier, it's a red flag. Okay, so we're going to have to remove the outlier, but don't just do it without telling anybody. Say, clearly, we removed the great value yogurt because it just looks really weird, and then somebody who knows more about yogurt has got to tell us, is that, are there a lot of yogurts out there that have that profile where vanilla is really low and strawberry is high? Hopefully not. Okay, we're going to remove it. Okay, so we remove the outlier. Let me scroll down a little more. Okay, so I like to keep that outlier in in a list. Okay, we could edit L3, but it's probably easier to just really quick do L3 store at L4. So then L3, that ve that that uh, list of differences is all is still there with the 100. But then I just went in and I deleted the 100 from this list. Literally just go down there and press Dell and it disappears from the list. Okay, now new histogram. Now we've got 11. Unfortunately, our sample size is a little lower, but oh well. But it's a much nicer histogram. So we can sort of get away with a nearly normal condition here. Um, again, the sample size is small. It's hard to be perfectly nearly normal. We've got all these other conditions. We're going to proceed with caution. Okay, lots of reasons to be dubious about this. Okay, now we do a t-test on L4. 
That's the, the list of differences without the outlier. Just go to stat test, do number two on the TI. Here's uh, what we get. We're going to take it out of the data. We're going to use L4. Make sure you put in the right list there. All it said is, is there a difference? That's what we're trying to figure out. We're not particularly uh, only looking for less than or greater than. We're, so we're going to do the two-sided. Uh, there's no the frequencies that all appear with frequency one. We don't have a lot of repeats that we used a frequency list for. And our mu naught's usually going to be zero here when we're looking at differences. Our our, um, our null hypothesis is the difference is zero. We do calculate, and the p value 0.424. That's a big p value. Okay, the t is less than one. P value is 0.424. Quite a high p value. Okay, so we fail to reject the null. Okay, let's look at let's look back at the histogram for a reality check. Look at where the histogram is. It's really centered right near zero, and it's got sort of equal stuff. It's it's right around zero. It's got a little bit of high stuff up here, but with such a small sample size, um, we're not going to get that that lo lovely effect that a big sample size has of sort of concentrating that variability. Um, it, we're going to have most of that variability even after we look at the standard error and all that. And it really looks like there's not much of a difference, okay? Um, compared to the natural variability in all the differences, the, the mean is maybe like right here. Well, let's see. The mean is 4.5. On average, it looked like it was 4.5 difference. But the, uh, the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation was 18. So it's really not very meaningful. Okay, we failed to reject the null. Um, there is not significant evidence or not evidence of a significant difference. All right.